Holy God and gracious God, we thank you for your word. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, enliven us. Draw us ever closer to you, giving all praise and honor to you. In Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Earlier this year, we did a series in the Psalms, and in mid-October, the last Psalm was Psalm 103, and it's summed up with the opening verses. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. It's really a beautiful psalm, and indeed it was a song. So it was a beautiful song that was sung. And it first and foremost is full of gratitude, of thanksgiving, of praising the Lord for what He has done. You see... When you are filled by who God is and what He has done, is doing, and will do, it engulfs your whole self. And you really just want to sing, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Amen? Amen. The reason I'm going back to Psalm 103 is because if you were here, you might recall that I mentioned the reading from Luke. Mary's song. And so I thought it would be very appropriate today on Gaudet Sunday. And by the way, Gaudet simply is Latin for rejoice. So if you want to say you know Latin, you can now say, I know Latin. I can say Gaudet. And it's rejoice. And it comes from our reading in Philippians. Rejoice, I say. Again, I say rejoice. Right, again. <laughs> so And there's the the pink is that color. That's why we also have the pink for it. And I thought on this day especially, it would be good to go over Mary's song. It is called the Magnificat. Or if you want to say Magnificat, either way, good with me. It's also Latin. You're learning Latin today, right? It means to magnify or to exalt. My soul magnifies the Lord. You can think about it this way. This is Mary's song of praise. It's a version of bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me. It is Mary's song of praise. So how about if we sing today and we are uplifted by her aria? I tell people, by the way, I don't sing really. You know, I turn off my microphone each time. But... This is how the Lord has gifted me in singing. So I'm going to sing with all my might this morning. We're going to first first start with the overture or the herald of blessing. It says, In those days Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town of Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. So we know from the account in Luke that Mary has been visited by the angel of angel Gabriel, and has been told that she's going to conceive a child, and his name will be Jesus. So then Mary goes, and she visits her cousin Elizabeth. And there's a a reception that is very unexpected. Uh, Mary doesn't expect this, and Elizabeth doesn't expect this either. Because at the sound of Mary's voice, the baby in Elizabeth's womb. And who is the baby in Elizabeth's womb? John the Baptist, right. John the Baptist leaped in her womb. And it's not just like a little kick, you know, like you get the, you know, I, I've never experienced it, but I, I, you know, women have told me and I've seen it. You know, the baby's kicking, right? And sometimes the baby's like stretching. This is like John the Baptist is leaping for joy. It says this, For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. You see, John the Baptist was already fulfilling his ministry. And what is his ministry? It is to be a herald of the Lord. His ministry is one of a herald, proclaiming the Lord. As we talked about this last week, prepare the way of the Lord. And so even though he's in the womb and can't speak, 
He is truly fulfilling Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Right? He is fulfilling that. As a matter of fact, he's fulfilling what was said in Deuteronomy and reemphasized by Jesus. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Right there's the joy of the Lord. Have you ever asked somebody, do you love the Lord? And they go, yes. And you think, really? Really? Are you loving the Lord with all your strength, all your soul, all your, all your mind, all your, you know, your entire self? Yes. I, you know, no. There's, there's that joy of the Lord. But you know what? That joy of the Lord comes because of the Holy Spirit. You see, any encounter of Jesus and knowing him as Lord and Savior brings faith into your heart. And that only happens through the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen, it was the Holy Spirit who enlivened not only John the Baptist, but gave spiritual insight to Elizabeth as well. For she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But listen to this, and why is it granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me. How could she know that Jesus is her Lord if not by the power of the Holy Spirit? Faith and spiritual insight comes because of the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe that a lot of people are weak in their faith because they do not ask for the Holy Spirit to fill them and enliven them. Before you read Scripture, before you have a devotion, pray for the Holy Spirit to fill you and to guide you. Before you come to listen to a message, pray, prepare yourself to receive the power of the Holy Spirit, and the Word of God. See, a lot of people, they come to Sunday morning, and they kind of go, well, I hope he's inspiring today. You know, they got the little check mark and like that. But that's not it. Because no matter how good or bad a preacher is, it does not depend on that. It depends on the power of the Holy Spirit at work. Pray for the Holy Spirit to enliven you, to enliven us all. So Elizabeth proclaims this, and then she recognizes the blessing that God has given Mary. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. Notice, this blessing is not about how wonderful Mary is. It's not exalting Mary, the blessing is because Mary believed. She believed the word of the Lord. Not just intellectually, but it was her whole self. She believed. And the blessing really was faith. Faith in God and his word. See, that's the great blessing that we all want to skip over. The great blessing is to know Jesus as Lord and Savior, to believe in Him and His Word. Amen. So that's why she begins. And by the way, (laughs) this was the overture, (laughs) okay? Let's go into the song now. You're thinking, well, wait a minute, hold on. Well, power of the Holy Spirit, man. Okay, so the first stanza, the first verse really is about glory and praise. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. So there it is, that first verse, my soul magnifies the Lord. Magnificat. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. By the way, when she says this, 
My soul magnifies the Lord, just as we covered in Psalm 103. This is not about making God greater, because God cannot be greater. So this is not about blessing God and somehow adding to Him. This is about giving glory, honor, and praise. Or another way to think about this is, my soul exalts. My soul glorifies. My soul gives praise to the Lord. Psalm 69, I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify Him with thanksgiving. So Mary starts off this way. But it is not simply a song of just praise. There's reason behind her praise. And the reason is this. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. The reason is because what the Lord has done for her. See, the Lord has not shown favor on the high and mighty, but on those who humble themselves before him. And we find this message again and again and again throughout Scripture of humbling yourself before the Lord. And you too, listen up really carefully. You too can receive his favor, his blessing. Humble yourself before the Lord. How do you do that? Here's one really simple way. Lord, in your mercy, forgive me for my sin. And against you and you alone have I sinned. And use me however you will, all to your glory. See, that's a prayer that doesn't seek glory of self. It doesn't seek earthly, worldly things. It seeks forgiveness and it seeks his will, his desire. And if you want to know, that's a prayer of faith. When you can simply come before the Lord, Lord, in your mercy, forgive me. Use me as you will. That's a prayer of faith. And you will be blessed in that prayer. It doesn't mean you're going to have an easy life, by the way. Think of Mary. Mary was blessed, and yet she was there and saw her son crucified. How horrifying would that be? And yet, in his death and resurrection, there was a blessing beyond anything she could have ever imagined. Now, no doubt, God could have chosen another woman. He could have done that. But he chose Mary, and he did favor her. He did give her his grace. And because of what God has done, she is blessed, and she is remembered as being blessed. But if you take a look at the focus of the song, it's not about Mary. She doesn't sing about herself. She sings more than anything about how great the Lord is. And in the next section, the next stanza, we find out that he is, might, he is mighty, holy, and merciful. Verse 49, For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He is mighty. This, this is the one, the Almighty One, who has come to her, who has shown favor to her. God Almighty. In the Old Testament, His name is El Shaddai. God Almighty. El is God, Shaddai is mighty. God Almighty. It signifies God's power and sovereignty. And by the way, we were just talking about this on Wednesday in our Bible study. God Almighty, the all-powerful, all-sufficient God who can do anything and meet any need. See, God came to Abram before he was Abraham and said this 
When Abram was 99 years old, and the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. There is nothing outside his reach. And do you know what? We confess this each and every week. In the Apostles' Creed, we say this, And I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And then in Nicene Creed, we add, of all that is seen and unseen. You see, God Almighty is the one who fulfills his promises. He fulfills his promises. God Almighty is the one who brings life where there seems to be no life. Remember, Abraham and Sarah, they had no children. And Sarah just laughed when God said, you're going to have a child. And Isaac's name means laughter. So God made life where there was none, with Elizabeth as well. And now with Mary, the miraculous conception. Look, in our day and age, we want to make God just as our friend. And when we do that, we lose out so much. Because when you are in despair, when you are between a rock and a hard place, you need to call out to God Almighty. For all things are possible for him. El Shaddai, God Almighty. And she says, he is holy. God Almighty is holy. Now we've spoken about this a lot over the years that I've been here. The holiness of God. And even his very name is holy. Why? Because his name and his nature go hand in hand. And you profess that as well each and every Sunday in the Lord's Prayer. You say this, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed, sacred, revered, holy. This is why Mary sings, Holy is his name. It's pure and undefiled. You know, I I never get tired of this. Maybe you do, I don't. But thinking around the throne of God and hearing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And you know, someday we're going to be around that throne. You're going to come to heaven and your jaw is going to drop because there's going to be a lot of people you didn't expect to be there. And they're going to look at you and their jaws are going to drop because, you know... Nobody expected us to be there either. But in a unified voice of praise, we too will be around the throne singing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Holy is God. And He is a merciful God. Mary, in her song, is thanking God for his mercy. So we've covered this. What is mercy? Mercy is not getting what you deserve. In essence, it is to withhold judgment. Now, most people, again, if God's just a friend, God will never judge. But that's not true. God does judge. And he judges exactly because he is holy. He cannot abide sin. And he will judge sin with his wrath. Just as he is light, in him there can be no darkness. Because darkness and light cannot coexist. Holiness and sin cannot coexist. You know, some people say, uh, hate the sin but love the sinner. Did you notice it's not the sin that God sends to hell, it's the sinner? And that's how holy he is. And if he was not merciful, we would get the judgment we deserve. But Mary sings of his mercy. 
You see, in His mercy, God withholds judgment for those who have received Jesus as Lord and Savior. Listen, brothers and sisters, it's that simple. And it's that profound. God, in His mercy, withholds judgment for those who confess Jesus as Lord and Savior. Ephesians chapter 2 says this, But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with Him and seated us with Him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages He might show the immeasurable riches of His grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. You want to know the story of Christmas? The story of Christmas is this. It is one of mercy and grace. God in his mercy withholds the judgment. God in his grace raises us up and seats us with him in the heavenly realm in Christ Jesus. And this is what God has done. God has done all of this work. John chapter 1, verse 12, But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So Mary, in her song, sings of a mighty God, a holy God, and a merciful God. And then she sings about the very work of God. She basically takes what she has been singing and now expands upon it. She sings what the Almighty God has done. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud and the thoughts of their hearts. And he has brought down the mighty from the thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things. And the rich he sent away empty. Now, there are some wonderful things in this, but there's also some very harsh words, words of discomfort here as well. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts, brought down the mighty from their thrones, the rich he will, will be sent away empty. I don't know about you, but that gave me pause. You know, we want to skip over these parts, right? Let's just skip over that. But this is part of her song because of what God has done. And it should really make us sit back for a moment. So it's about pride here. Really, that's what she's talking about, singing. So what does it say in Proverbs? Pride goes before, most people say the fall because it's been shortened. This, I wasn't trying to do a, get, a, a gotcha, but okay, I gotcha. But he, listen to the full proverb. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So it's a little bit more serious. Now, sometimes, by the way, our pride can be bruised in a humorous manner, kind of makes us remember things. You might have heard the story about a, a, a years ago about a CEO of Fortune 500 company. He pulled into a service station, get gas. He went inside to pay. When he came out, he noticed his wife was talking to the service attendant. She'd actually dated the guy before she met her husband. Now, the CEO, he got in the car. The two drove in silence for a while. He was feeling pretty good about himself because he's the CEO and she had dated the attendant. And he finally said, I bet I know what you're thinking, which is always dangerous for a husband to say, right? Like, that right there, you know it's off the rails. I bet I know what you're thinking. I bet you were thinking you were glad you married me, a Fortune 500 CEO, and not him, a service station attendant. She said, no. I was thinking if I married him, he'd be a Fortune 500 CEO, and you'd be a service station attendant. So sometimes we get bruised in a humorous manner, right? But there's also a serious side to this. Let me give you a true story. 
In the summer of 1986, two ships collided in the Black Sea off the coast of Russia. Hundreds of passengers died as they were hurled into the icy waters. News of the disaster was further darkened when an investigation revealed the cause. It wasn't a problem with technology. The, the radar did not malfunction. There wasn't even thick fog. Both could have steered clear. But each captain was aware of the other ship and would not budge. And because of their pride, hundreds of people died. They came to their senses too late. And really, that's how it is with pride. We often come to our senses too late. And this is why there's the urgency of sharing the good news of Christ Jesus with everyone. Now, that's the serious part of the song. There's also good news in this song as well, in this stanza. It says this, he has filled the hungry with good things. Now, when we think about hungry, and especially during the holidays, right? It's the turkey, it's the ham, it's the scalloped potatoes. I really love scalloped potatoes. Actually, I'm, I love almost any potato, quite frankly. Um, but it's not, and I, okay, and I make really good whipped potatoes too, mashed potatoes. But that's not what he's talking about here. What is he really talking about? Well, Jesus actually told us what it is to, be, to hunger and be filled in the Beatitudes. M Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. So here's the question. Are you hungering for his grace, for his love, his mercy, his righteousness, his truth, his peace, the comfort these are the things that he fills us with. These are the things that actually matter in our lives. So Mary is praising God for what he has done, and she is praising him for the works and the promises of God. Let's go to the promises of God. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his offspring forever. You know, we've talked about the promises of God, and we do that all the time, right? All the time. And especially in Advent, we recall the promises of God from the Old Testament to the New. And we should see that the promises of God are such sweet notes, these musical notes, that we should let them ring in our hearts forever. Because in Christ Jesus, the promises of God that we have are eternal. And thus, those sweet notes, the promises, should ring in our hearts eternally. We should never forget them. He gave the promises with Abraham, with Isaac, with Jacob. He gave them with Moses. He gave them through the prophets. He gave them to us in Christ Jesus. And in Christ Jesus, we are blessed. We have the promise of an eternal land. Right? We're going to the promised land that we have eternal life in Him and Him alone. There are these and many more, these promises that we have. You see, the promises I'm talking about are not just here and now. We have blessings here and now, this very day. But the promises are also for us, to be, for us and fulfilled in the future. And you just need to go to the book of Revelation. Revelation, it says this, chapter 21, verse 3, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. There is no more separation. We are with God fully, completely. And our hearts are filled. Right? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Just as Mary sings, 
her song, The Magnificat. So, you got the sense of what Advent's about, right? It is the promises, the joy that we have. So, think about this. Think, ponder, meditate upon this. What favor and blessings has God given to you in Jesus? Ponder anew His might, His holiness, His mercy, and hunger to be filled with the good things of God. And let His promises for you in Christ Jesus ring forever in your heart. Amen? Amen. Amen.